السلام علیکم وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ ان اسلامک ہسٹری فارملی اسلامک ہسٹری اسٹارٹ فرام پری پروفیٹک ایرا اٹ مینس جاہلیہ بٹ ان آل کلاسیکل اسلامک ہسٹری ٹیکسٹ بکس وی کین سی دیٹ اٹ اسٹارٹ فرام حضرت آدم علیہ السلام سو آل اسکالرس فرام Uh, Imam Tabari to uh, Sulaiman Nadivi, Salman Nadivi and Hamidullah, Abdullah Maududi, them all Islamic historians, they start the Islamic history from Hazrat Adam. Because uh, as uh, Maulana Maududi wrote in his uh, Islam and historical perspective, he said that uh, The Kufur, you know, there are two kind of idea from one is Tawheed and second one is Kufur. First, Hazrat Adam, uh, through the Hazrat Adam, Allah, Allah introduced the Tawheed. Then after the, some generations or after his generation, the Kufur came to existence. And after that, when the Kufur became increased and multiply in, uh, affected the life of the society, in a d- a m- number of ways uh, like exploitations, oppressions, viciousness and immorality emerge in the different forms. Life became intolerable. Allah then appointed the, some righteous people to preach message of truth among the wrongdoers, among the people and invade them to the right and convert them to God fearing people and worshiping and obeying the uh, God alone. That was the origin of Islamic history. This type of Islamic history narrating can be seen in various Islamic historic, uh, historical textbooks. Now, in the academy, especially in the uh, academy of Islamic history, We only see the uh, Islamic history start from the prophetic era or pre-prophetic era, like the Jahili period. So th- that's the uh, main problem. In the Islamic perspective of history or uh, historical perspective of Islam, Islam itself says that the history uh, starts from Hazrat Adam as per the Quran or Hadith or pro- uh, the sayings of Prophet Muhammad. Then As a student of history or Islamic history, we must look into this perspective. Why these scholars of history in the modern era, they start with the Islamic history from pre-prophetic uh, era or prophetic era to the modern era. But the Islamic scholars at the same time, they start this, uh, start this Islamic history writing from the Hazrat Adam. Because There is a perspective of Islam start from all humankind uh, are part of Islamic history. Because Hazrat Adam, the first man, according to Islam, was a prophet, the prophet of Muhammad. And he is all are, us are his sons. Uh, like uh, Surah Hujrat. إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْسَىٰ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شَعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا The uh, Quran says, we created you uh, from a, a woman and man uh, to uh, recognize each other, like you are say, different races, different uh, tribes, but, uh, for to recognize each other. It means all are from a uh, one man or one woman. Uh, this is the way of uh, narrating of Islamic history in Islamic study, especially Islamic scholars from Muslim community. Two types of Islamic scholars from uh, Muslims and non-Muslims. And there are many Islamic scholars from non-Muslim, uh, means out of Islamic community. Like there are Orientalists, there are Islamic studies experts from uh, out of Muslim community. So we have to keep at uh, this idea. And why the Quran always discuss about the history of uh, early generations? 
Quran says that it for Ibra or Nikala. Nakal. Ibarat means uh, Nakala or Ibarat means good lessons or moral lessons. We have to learn from the uh, these early generations uh, to improve ourselves and uh, to uh, go forward to the truths. That's why Prophet Muhammad uh, or the Quran always discuss about the history of older generations. Uh, like uh, uh, once Quran says, "Siru fil faldru means uh, you have to travel on earth to search the truth or uh, to the uh, consequences that happen by the uh, negligence of these uh, the, uh, disbelievers or wrongdoers. And uh, another thing, uh, why the Islam, uh, Islamic experts start with the history of Jahiliya? Because there is a conventional history writing after they classified the religion uh, into different religion because uh, uh, the Quran or Prophet says that all religions are from uh, are connected to the Hazrat Adam because he was a prophet, he was a part of Islam. Then after that the Kufri came into existence, then uh, another religion uh, started to uh, increase or started to exist. But that's an uh, Islamic idea. But in the common conventional history writing, these scholars, after uh, classifying or uh, uh, compartmentalizing the religions and the history narrating starts from the pre-prophetic era. We know that pre-prophetic era means that uh, in the time of Prophet Muhammad, the Arabian society or or his uh, community or the uh, Arab or non-Arab community were were just like a pagans. They don't know the truth. They have uh, that much. They don't have that much life systems or ideas, concepts toward the uh, idea of God, or they don't have that much idea of the life also. And if the Prophet Muhammad started to preach about Tawheed, about the idea of life and message, and the idea of Akhira means the hereafter, and he, uh, Prophet Muhammad, taught them how to live or how to behave, or how to manner. Or he, uh, the Prophet Muhammad taught them very well. Then the history writing started from the prophetic era. The two type of era, we will, we will discuss about Jahiliya later. I, will dis I am saying that there are many kind of narrations in Islam history. The conventional history writers, story, they say the Islamic history trans, uh, starts from Jahiliya. And there are uh, many different history writing also, uh, especially about Islamic history. Uh, like many, many reasons of is, uh, Islamic history writing in Islamic societies. One is a regime favoritism. We know we have many history classical textbooks, but most of them uh, have been written in a different regime era. So some people, they wrote the history in favor of Umayyah Khilafat or Umayyah Caliphate. Some historians, they wrote in favor of Abbasi. Some of historians of, his, uh, in, of Islamic history they wrote in favor of Tunisian uh, Muslim dynasties or Andalusian dynasties. Because of this favoritism, we can see that there are many hatred to other Mus uh, Muslim dynasties also. So there is a, uh, some kind of bias or partisanship in this history writing. Another one is Arab and non-Arab perspective. We know the Umayyad dynasty mainly focused on Arab society or Arab leadership among the Muslim society at that time. So most of the leaders, for our, uh, most of the historians were Arabs. 
and they uh, at the same time there were many non arabs also like persian and uh, central asian historians they were non arabs at that time so from this perspective arab writers they wrote the history in favor of the arabs and they some uh, they uh, showed some kind of enmity towards non arabs also it's not enmity but they did not consider well as much as arab society at that time or arab uh, contributions or arab life experience uh, in the narration of history or islamic history there is another significant perspective that is a sectarian perspective you know the uh, main sects in islam that is shi'i and sunni the sunni scholars the most predominant sects of uh, in india in all over the islamic world that is sunni uh, sects these sects and the another sect that is shi'i sects so the hatred and enmity and partisanship and their favoritism towards their own sects they created uh, enormous uh, problems uh, in the muslim society especially in the islamic history writings and uh, we can see that the debates start from the emergence of shiism in muslim society and uh, because of that they these shi historians always focus on hazrat ali and the the problems and the schisms and conflicts among muslim society start from that point of view and the sunni historians also they showed uh, they created some uh, uh, sorts of problems toward the shi society also so the confusions the doubts to other sects also outcome of these kind of history narratives uh, at that time and still it makes so much problems among the muslim historians because of these history uh, narratives and there are another uh, important factor that is a centric history na- narratives if you have power and you have uh, darbari scholars uh, we know that we say that darbari scholars then they write history for you because you have power so in muslim history also these uh, most of the history writing related to baghdad or uh, madina or antulus or tunisia or or india in india in delhi so all of are these history writings related to the centric they these scholars uh, did not like or uh, ha- they were happy to neglect or ignore the the history narratives from the peripheral that is another problem we are facing in history uh, reading or history narratives especially in islamic history there is another important factor that you know after uh, because of this centric style of history writing history narratives there are many scholars from the regional uh, area uh, from uh, uh, this central asia or persia or south asia or southeast asia there are many historians they wrote the history of the their own region they uh, try to ignore the centric power of history writing so i um, mean there are another discussion that the colonial and post post colonial era you know the colonial era all our historians they tended to write the history from the center because they have power then uh, they wrote the history from the perspective of centric idea but the in post colonial era there are many scholars they started to write from the native or their peripheral region so this kind of history writing also can be seen in islamic history uh, writing and the most prominent and most uh, debatable perspective of islamic history writing that is orientalist writing we uh, some uh, sometimes we discuss about the emergence of orientalism um, in the perspective of crusade wars 
and the study of or in uh, the western scholars or christian scholars about eastern society that is orient means eastern then then these western scholars they started to study e orient or eastern and their society their culture their religion their oh, politics all kind of a uh, life they study about these uh, segments of the uh, eastern society and especially in islamic studies these western scholars started to study islamic society they started from the text like quran and hadith the mostly they focused on prophet muhammad because there was a, a crusades war there was enmity uh, from a between muslims and uh, the western world especially the christian dynasties at that time and the crusades war were going on at that time so these scholars started to study prophet muhammad and in in, in some distinguished way they try to tarnish the prophet muhammad's personality and his whole history and but there are some other some good muslim uh, good orient writers also some good orient historians also we can we'll see in that uh, like the most prominent present uh, historians or the scholars that is journal esposito there are many scholars but uh, some other scholars like uh, goldziher bernard lewis uh, montgomery ward these are these historians in some way to to uh, maximum extent uh, to maximum extent they try to uh, tarnish the whole islamic story especially the life and personality of prophet muhammad at, at that time so when we read the orientalist writing of history we have to scrutinize or we have to focus how they write the history or how they read the uh, society of muslims or of the global uh, islamic world so this kind of history writing can be seen in uh, history uh, narratives of islamic society at the present time oh, uh, one is um, regime favorism uh, second one arab non arab perspective a uh, third one sectarian perspective on fourth one centric and fifth and regional our uh, last one is orientalism so these all are the perspective of history writing can be seen in islamic society when we read a history book or when when we have to prefer a history then we have to uh, focus how these writers or how these scholars wrote their history then uh, we have Um, uh, must have an idea or uh, about the islamic history and there are many significant contribution of muslim society towards his, uh, history writing one well, the most uh, prominent uh, factor is historiography uh, because of the sayings or tradition of prophet muhammad uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam these scholars they have to scrutinize the reporters of hadith be the hadith means the uh, tradition of prophet muhammad then uh, because of to protect the sunna the to protect the prophet muhammad personality and to preserve the hadith so these scholars started to study the reporters and life and their manners so this historiography came to existence the first time in the world so uh, this is why there is another important name for this story if that is ilm ar rijal rijal means the men uh, the uh, men of knowledge is totally related to hadith then this scholars uh, like imam bukhari muslim uh, there are many muhaddis means hadith scholars among muslim community muslim society these all scholars uh, Uh, study hadith and the, their authenticity and they classified to uh, different segments the most prominent uh, historiographer of uh, in contemporary era uh, that was uh, nasiruddin albani he just passed away he is not uh, he is no more now 
but his contribution toward the historiography of hadith uh, like he wrote two books especially two books one is al ahadith al laifa al ahadith al mawdu'a he i classified some of hadith that is created in the name of prophet muhammad and he uh, classified other some hadith that were is laif means it's a weakened hadith it's so weak uh, because because of that we cannot uh, report uh, for uh, for the legitimacy of any uh, issue in, in the uh, regards to sharia and there are another important factor in the in the discussion of islamic history that is islamic history is rather than dates and names we must to dive or we must to study how and why uh, the things happen in islamic history the islamic history study does not mean that just to collect the names or the dates as a students of islamic studies as a or students of islamic history we must look into how the things or how the incident happened or why and when what which that is important okay but the how on why questions always important of is and islam as a global religion every part of the world has a significant amount of islamic history uh, if we be looking into indian subcontinent now we have different uh, countries from the indian subcontinent like bangladesh india and sri lanka and pakistan but at that time it, it was indian subcontinent so all history of these parts are interconnected so that is actually another uh, region and the same way we have southeast asia, asia uh, like malay peninsula indonesia malaysia bhutan taiwan brunei and some other parts of uh, malay peninsula or southeast asia uh, we have central asia we have andalus we have uh, west africa uh, we have north africa we have different part of the world that are totally connected with uh, islamic history writing so we always read uh, from different perspective from regionally and centric uh, first we will start from makkah uh, to our madina and we we'll, uh, we have to go to the expansion of islamic world to the different uh, span of the time and we have many famous historians in islamic studies one is uh, that start from tabari imam tabari uh, imam tabari ibn ishaq ibn kasir ibn asir and ibn khaldun and uh, the modern scholars like uh, sulaiman nadwi shibli ulumani and maulana maududi and uh, ahmad raza khan daram uh, and ashraf ali sanawi there are many scholars uh, that totally related with islamic studies especially in islamic history so all these uh, books related to islamic history must be read by uh, students like you like us uh, or, or the researchers of islamic studies like us thank you